Ko tarawera te maunga, ko Rotorua te roto, ko Jews toko hapu, ko Oliver Bruce toko ingoa. Kia ora. I want to, like everybody else, thank the mana whenua uh, for the amazing hospitality that's been shown this week. Um, for someone who grew up here, it's been a really profound experience for me um, and, a, and a new relationship as I think of it in, in my land here. I wanted to take a moment and this time to really talk a little bit about my, about my story, where I've come from and, and how I've come to be part of um, the Edmund Hillary Fellowship and how I see it in the world. I've always been thinking about how do we try and solve environmental problems. For me, the biggest thing that we can do is work out how to get business aligned to be able to solve environmental problems. For a long time, I thought that was just going to businesses and saying, hey, hey, just try and solve some, you know, try and solve these things. But what ended up happening was they were saying, look, the policies aren't aligned. So early in my career, I went into policy and banged my head against a wall for a couple of years and realized there was, this isn't, this isn't going to be the way that we're able to, to solve things. I mean, it's, what really is required is I need to go into business. I need to learn how to do business because policymakers aren't just, you know, they're not able to move fast enough. They're responding really to business. I had the opportunity to go and work in Qatar. And while I was there, <laughs> I was building industrial projects, which as someone from, uh, you know, with an environmental background, was a total mind fuck. <laughs> and the thing that became really obvious to me was that like those resources that they have under the ground they're not going to be, they're, they're going to continue to burn those. They're going to continue to, 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 you know, to have those business models continue for the rest of the existence because uh, effectively there are people offshore and elsewhere around the world who want to buy them. That power won't change unless we work out a way to change it. So I went and did a lot of theory, you know, research around change making. And this quote from Buckminster Fuller really resonated with me. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, you build a new model and you work out how to make the old one obsolete. That led me back to New Zealand. And for me, I ended up joining Uber. Now, I know <laughs> that doesn't exactly seem like a, a really straightforward uh, connection. But actually, what Uber was doing and why I was there was we were disrupting car ownership. Everybody buys cars. And if you look at transport, transport's actually the fastest growing era of emissions. But if you were to change, if, you, if you're able to decouple needing to own a car to being able to get around, all of a sudden a world of opportunity exists in terms of being able to change that business model. And cars, as a result, will go away. I was really privileged to be able to work on low emissions vehicles while I was there and uh, initiatives to building better links into public transports, both here, in Australia, uh, both here and in Australia. Since I left in April, I've really been uh, working on supporting early stage companies in New Zealand with that same lens. How do we build business models that disrupt the old polluting industries that we want to obsolete? So why would I become an Edmund Hillary Fellow? How does that lead me to here? Well, when I, when I came to New Frontiers in April, I walked into the room and it was like, all my mates are here, all my change maker friends, all these people who are thinking about how to make you know, how, how to change what we think of as possible in the world. It only made sense that I would get into the tent and work out how to bring others into the tent as well. The thing that I think about in terms of New Zealand's place in the world is that we're a nation of 4.7 million people. We're tiny, we're on the edge of the world. We have no real significant impact, especially when you consider the fact that like one Chinese city will do more carbon emissions, for example, than we would. But what we have and what the opportunity that we have here is to be a forward signal, a forward signal to the world around what is possible. We did this already with, uh, with giving women the vote, obviously, first. We do this in, in terms of how we think about uh, integrating indigenous values into our, both our legal and our economic systems. And I believe we can do that in terms of thinking about being the incubator for global solutions and high impact environmental solutions that obsolete the old business models of how we've done things in the past. I believe that we can create a very vibrant ecosystem here in New Zealand that will build those, those solutions that we want to see out in the rest of the world. 
terms of how I can how I can help and how I can what I can offer. I'm working with the investor community and the uh, in, it, from from the fellowship to help facilitate the flow of capital and resources, et cetera, into the early stage ecosystem in New Zealand, especially with those, those ventures that are working on those global solutions. My time's up, so kia ora, and thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.